Hello, welcome to a video tutorial about sound synthesis in the browser using JavaScript, using the P5.js sound library. Now, this is a, a one part of a continuing series about uh, programming with sound. And what I'm going to do in this particular video, which is quite different from my previous four videos, is instead of loading a sound from a file like some music, or perhaps playing a sound effect like Could you what I'm going to do is instead create, in a way, sound from nothing, sound synthesis. Now, of course, I could do sound synthesis myself. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Okay, I can't sing, it's terrible. Um, but this is the idea. My vocal cords are vibrating and they're creating a vibration. That vibration is traveling through the air uh, and it's actually going into a microphone. The microphone reads that vibration, records it, then it's coming out of the speaker of your computer, which is vibrating and then traveling again through the air and eventually into your ear. So this idea of a sound wave is something we need to talk about, this wave that travels through the air. How can we encode, synthesize that wave, create a sound, and then control that wave to essentially play a melody, play a tune, allow, create an interactive piano. All these types of things are possible with what I'm going to show you how to do. So the first idea is really to think about a sound wave. So let me, um, let me come over here, and there are a couple key concepts which I think are quite important. So what I'm going to draw for you here is something called a sine wave. Now, I'm sure I am not drawing this exactly correctly, but if you take the sine function, the sine function being a function from trigonometry, where is if you have a triangle and you take sine of theta, it equals the opposite, the length of the opposite side of the triangle divided by the hypotenuse of the triangle. So you can go and look at all my trigonometry and triangle tutorials and stuff somewhere else. That's not really relevant for here. What's interesting is if you, if you think of this angle as a value that's changing over time and were to graph that, you're going to see a wave pattern like this. So it's a perfectly symmetrical repeating wave form, a sine wave. And if that sine wave travels through the air, you're going to hear a tone. Now, a wave has certain properties. One property is amplitude. So if we can look at, this is like the top of the wave, and this is like the bottom of the wave, and you can think of that height as something called uh, amplitude. So the height of the wave. And now the height of the wave is actually, uh, <laughs> is actually a volume. So the higher the wave, the louder the sound, the amplitude. I mean, I'm sure there's like a very fine, nuanced, scientific distinction between those terms, but we can think of it for right now. Somebody will yell at me in the comments in the chat and I'll feel very embarrassed and sad and that I got everything wrong. But anyway, so amplitude, that's the height of the wave. Now, another key part of the wave is something called period. So period, and I'm gonna, uh, like this, is the amount of time or the length between of the length of a full cycle of the wave. So you can see from here, this top of the wave all the way to here is one full cycle that just repeats over and over again. How long it took for that cycle is the period. Um, and in the case of sound, we're really thinking about time in seconds. How many, that, that wave, like how long did it take for that waveform to, um, to wave, so to speak. Now, one divided by period, one over period, is a term called frequency meaning not how long for one cycle, but how many cycles per second. And this is actually a measurement you've probably heard, uh, hertz. So if something is 60 hertz, that's a frequency of 60 cycles per second. And this is key because what we're going to do is set, we're going to create a wave with code, we're going to set its amplitude, we're going to set its frequency as a value in hertz, and then listen to it. So these are the concepts. What I want to do now is look at how do I, in JavaScript, create this waveform and control its amplitude and frequency. Okay, let's go and do that now. So coming over here, uh, I think I'm back over here, uh, and here, here you are, here I am. I'm gonna play some music for a second just to get my mind up. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, and now I'm gonna minimize this. I'm going to open my browser open over here, and I'm going to go to, this is an example I have running. So I have a completely empty blank canvas. I don't actually need a canvas for this example. I'm just doing stuff with sound. I'm going to go back to the code, and I'm actually just, for the sake of argument, going to make the canvas a little bit smaller so it takes up less space on the page. Okay, so what do I need to do first? I need to create a sound wave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it wave. And uh, technically, the term for a wave in uh, P5.js sound library is oscillator. A wave being something that oscillates, much like plucking a string, right? You pluck a string, it oscillates like a wave, and it vibrates through and, and, and pushes that wave through the air up to your ear, you hear a sound. OK, so what I need to do is say wave equals new p5.oscillator. 
So this is a new object you might not be familiar with, p5 dot oscillator. Um, this, now I've created an oscillator object. So this object exists. It's up to me to turn it on and turn it off, to set its frequency, to set its amplitude, to configure that oscillator, so to speak. Uh, one thing that I think is important for me to mention is that here in index.html, um, you know, I, I have a reference to the P5JS sound library. You can't really see it all the way there. There we go. Um, so you need to, for this to work, you need to make sure you have the P5.sound.js file loaded as part of your project. Um, so now I'm back to here. The other thing I think is worth showing you, and I have it here, is the reference page for p5.oscillator. So this is something you might want to look at on your own time and review. There's actually a nice little uh, example on this page, but I just want to show you, here are a bunch of the functions that I'm going to start to demonstrate to you. Start, stop, amplitude, frequency, set type, connect, disconnect. So there's a lot of, all those things I showed you about manipulating a, a, a song file, an mp3 file that you load and play, there's similar things going on here. So one thing that's really important though is this idea of set type. So look at this, I talked about sine waves, but you could also have a triangle wave, a sawtooth wave, or a square wave. And I actually have an image here, I was gonna draw these as diagrams, but I'll just use this image instead. So what the waveform actually looks like uh, is going to determine what the sound sounds like. And, and of course, the world is your oyster in terms of possible ways that you might be able to do sound synthesis, but P5 by default allows you to create oscillators of these four forms. Sine wave, square wave, triangle wave, and sawtooth wave. And this image uh, comes from uh, Wikipedia, and I believe this is a Creative Commons licensed image. <laughs> I better check that, but hopefully I'm, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's uh, available to be used in this video, and you could also use it as well. Anyway, okay, so um, I'll, I'll post a link to it in the uh, description. Okay, so, so we'll try a bunch of different forms, but let's just start with a sine wave. So the first thing I want to do in my code is say wave.setType, uh, and I believe uh, I need to pass in a string, meaning a word in between quotes, a uh, sign being sine wave. The other thing I could do is set the amplitude. Uh, oh, by just saying amplitude, I'm gonna set it to one. And then I could say wave.frequency. I'm gonna set some frequency. Let's try uh, 300, whatever that might sound like. And then uh, I'm going to uh, ah, pl play it. I think I need to say uh, play. Play or start, I'm not sure. Let's look at the reference page. Uh, it looks like start, starts the oscillator. And there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a nuance to this function which I think will be interesting to see. So I'm gonna say start. So let's uh, refresh this sketch. Can you hear that? A nice tone. Let's go back. It's very hard for me to hear it the way I have the sound configured for the, let me make this 400. That sounds very similar. What did I do wrong? Uh, so maybe that frequency function isn't correct. Uh, let's look. <laughs> let's look back. Frequency. Uh, time out. Pause. Back again, there was an issue with the order of these operations. So setting the amplitude and setting the frequency will not work unless you call those after start. And it actually says that in the documentation, I just didn't read that properly. So what I'm gonna do now is go back to the page and I'm gonna refresh it. You can hear that 400. And I'll mention that 400, 440, the frequency of 440 is actually the musical note A. You can tune your violin to it now. Can you hear that? That's the musical note A if I'm right. And I'll just mention that if I make that a little bit higher, if I say 1000, you should be able to hear that that's quite a bit uh, higher. So let me go back to this, and actually let me just turn the amplitude down to zero, and there you go. Now, you'll notice in this program, because I, I don't, I, hopefully I'm not blowing anyone's ears out, that, um, that there is a, I have a play pause button. So while I was taking a break there for a second to figure out what was wrong, I added that button. Let's just look at the code. So very briefly, there's just a button that says play and pause. There's a function called toggle associated with whenever that button is pressed. And then in that function, I have a Boolean variable that's set to either true or false based on whether this Boolean variable playing. And then in draw, I'm either coloring the background pink or gray, depending on whether that Boolean variable is true or not. So if I, if I go back here and run this again, you can see playing that button toggles the background. So one of the things that I want to do show you is that I can actually just take this code right here and I can put that here in uh, in the toggle function, and then I could actually say wave.stop here in, in, in the else. So right now what I want to do is toggle the, that oscillator on and off. So I'm going to run this. 
Do you hear it? I think you do. <laughs> Wait, I don't hear it. I don't know why I can't hear it anymore. <laughs> oh, the amplitude's at zero. <laughs> so let me turn it back to 0 0.5. Okay, now you can hear it. Right, on and off. Oh, I think there's like a low hum. Uh, anyway, hopefully the sound is fine. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so I can toggle that sound on and off. Now there's a couple things. One I should mention is, uh, you don't actually have to, I don't actually have to start and stop it. What I could really just do is, you know, start it right here in setup, and I could immediately set the amplitude to zero. And then what I could do here is just, uh, and I could also set the frequency here in setup. And then what I could do is just set the amplitudes. So I don't need start. I just want to set the amplitude to 0.5 or set the amplitude to 0. So I'm going to run that again. I'm turning it off. Now, one thing I'll mention is, do you hear that little like clipping? Each time I start and stop it, there's a quick clip of the sound. That's because the oscillator comes in at full amplitude immediately. So often with a sound like this, it's a little bit advantageous to kind of fade it in very slowly. And there's actually the amplitude function, and I believe start and stop, there's an optional second argument. So if I put in like one as a second argument, it's going to take one second to fade in that sound or fade out that sound. And I could put in 0.1 or something much shorter if I want. But let's take a listen to that. Did you hear that fade in? Very hard for me to hear it because it's very quiet out of my speakers, but hopefully it's piping through the sort of YouTube recording system and you can actually hear it. Okay, so hopefully you heard that distance. Now, let's talk a little bit about, uh, let's do one more thing I think which would be worth doing. What I, what I think would be worth doing is let me create a slider. And I'm gonna say slider equals create slider. And now I need a range. So the audible, I believe an aud a reasonable sort of audible range of frequencies is between like 20 and 20,000 perhaps. But I don't want to blow out your ears. <laughs> I'm afraid of doing anything too crazy. So I'm going to have a range, a frequency range between like, let's just say 100 and 1200, which I think will be somewhat reasonable. And I'm going to start at the musical note A, 440. So I'm going to create a slider. And in, uh, in draw, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say wave. Uh, I, somebody is, I, usually when in the chat, if someone's blasting with emojis, I know that something's wrong, but I don't know what that is. Um, so uh, wave dot frequency, I should, uh, frequency uh, slider dot value. So what I want to do is now at least tie the frequency to a slider. And so first I need to play it. You can hear that. So you can see as I can change that frequency on the fly. So this is the basic idea. I can synthesize a sound as a waveform. I can fade it in, I can fade it out, I can change its frequency, I can change its amplitude. And I want to actually, let's just briefly, maybe I'll, we'll add like triangle wave or sawtooth wave or square wave just to hear what some of those sound like. But mainly what I want to do in the next video is talk about something called an envelope. And an envelope is a way of kind of crafting around that oscillator. Uh, sort of musical attack, a fade in, a fade out, and that's going to make allow us to configure the oscillator in a way that might sound more like an electric piano or a particular kind of musical instrument. I'm not, we're not going all the way there to that. And then I want to talk about what are specific frequencies of specific musical notes, how do those relate to a concept called MIDI, and how might you create a program that sort of generates a tune or allows a user to interactively play a uh, piano. Okay, so. Um, um, so what I'm going to do here is let's, uh, so I think I'm done, but let's just, uh, let's just look, uh, before I go, <laughs> let's look here at um, the oscillator object. Oh, I'm in frequency. Uh, uh, oscillator object, what I want to look at is uh, this. So the options for uh, set type, sine, triangle, soft tooth, or square. So let's just try a triangle wave um, and hear what that sounds like. See if you can hear the difference. has a kind of different quality to it. And so what I recommend 
um, that you do, one thing you might think about as an exercise is can you create a whole interface? An interface for changing the waveform, for changing the frequency, for changing the amplitude. What happens if you have multiple oscillators? Can you harmonize? So this, you know, there's a lot of bunch of things you could try here. And I, I also want to remember to make sure I do something where we visualize that wave itself. So where the wave is drawn on screen. So I should I should make that happen at some point too. Okay, thanks for watching this sound synthesis video. I look forward to hearing your feedback in the comments and the chat and all that sort of stuff. There's no there's no chat, I guess actually. <laughs> It's over. <laughs> Bye. Hello, video epilogue. I realized I forgot actually to remove wave dot stop in here when I was showing you that you didn't need stop, that you could just fade the amplitude down to zero. So I'm going to actually take that out and I'm going to go back and run this again. Hit play. Hit pa uh, pause. And pause is probably the wrong word. It's fade in, fade out. And I could make the text of the button change. All sorts of stuff I could make this better. But at least that was a brief correction. Okay, thanks for watching this video.